by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Let me hear somebody shout Jesus! 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 The name of Jesus! It's greater than any other name. The name of Jesus is greater than any other name. Put your hands together for the Lord, somebody. Give the Lord a shout. Give him another shout. Sometimes we don't know the power that we have. But this morning I am declaring to you by that name Jesus. That because of the power and the potency of that name. Every other name has come down. Every other situation and circumstance has come down. Because of that name Jesus, a way has been made for you. Because of that name Jesus, your head has been lifted up. Because of that name Jesus, you have healing, you have deliverance, you have restoration. Because of that name Jesus, light has broken out for you. Because of that name Jesus, there is a shift concerning you. Because of that name Jesus, there is a rearrangement in your favor. Because of that name Jesus, you are rising up again. 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 I'm speaking to somebody here this morning. You are rising up again. The name of Jesus is lifting you up. The name of Jesus is cleansing you. The name of Jesus is making a way for you. The name of Jesus is exalting you. You are rising up. You are rising up. You are rising up. Light has come. Glory has come. Deliverance has come. Healing has come. And lifting up has come. The name of Jesus has made a way for you. A way out of the wilderness. The name of Jesus is bringing freshness to you. Because of that name, that disease is gone. That pain is gone. In the name of Jesus, I declare a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, I declare an open door. The name of Jesus is opening every closed door. The name of Jesus is bringing you to a place of strength. Weakness is going. Pain is going. Discouragement is going. Depression is going. Disaster is going. Failure is going. The name of Jesus is opening a new page for you. The name of Jesus is declaring you strong again, healthy again, powerful again, successful again. The name of Jesus is causing the heavens over your head to be opened. The cloud is gone. The sun is breaking forth. 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 Somebody is receiving light. Somebody is receiving healing. Somebody is receiving deliverance. Somebody is rising from the mighty clay. Somebody is being set on the rock. Somebody is receiving a new cloak. Somebody is crossing the barrier. Somebody is receiving new grace. Somebody is receiving new favor. The name of Jesus is lighting up your life again. Your life is being lighted up again. Hope has come. Strength has come. Faith has come. Deliverance has come. You are being lifted up. You are being lifted up. You are being lifted up. 
in Psalm 18 and verse number 29 that there is something that God has given to us said for by thee I have run through a troop and by my God I have lived I have lived over a wall I declare that you will run through every troop no truth can stop you. No army can stop you. No storm can stop you. No conspiracy can stop you. I declare that you are running through the truth. And by your God, every wall of resistance, every obstacle, anything that stands in your way, I prophesy that you have lived over that wall. And I declare also, that as for the God that we serve, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. May he be a buckler to you, my brother. May he be a buckler to you, my sister. May he put that situation together again. May he restore you again. May he be a buckler because you have put your trust in him. And then the next verse tells us, that who is God oh somebody give the Lord a shout this morning who is God save our God who is God save our God and who is a rock save our God may he be a rock for you may he stabilize your life may he rearrange your life and then the psalmist says God will get you with strength and then he will make your way perfect i prophesy that every way of yours may jehovah make it perfect may he make it perfect may he make every imperfection perfect because he is guiding you with strength and then we can stop at the 33rd verse may he make your feet like hind's feet and i prophesy 
that Jehovah will set you up at a high place at a high place if you are the one that I'm talking to give him a shout he will set you up at a high place 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 lift up your two hands if you can this morning father we release all the powers in the wonderful name of Jesus we declare that by you we have run through a troop by you we have leaped over every wall we declare that there is no God like our God today speak to your children strengthen them counsel them provide for them lift them up show them that you are God and there is none like you and we declare that every other name that will try to exalt itself about the name of Jesus we bring it down we crush it we cause it to be of no effect concerning your children and we ask oh God that your word will bring healing will bring comfort will bring joy will bring deliverance and will bring a lifting up put up your hands together for the Lord somebody please take your seats for a few moments it is time for us to go out and work for the Lord to spend and be spent in the work of the master because this is the assignment is given to us when everything is said and done we are going to be judged by our ability to fulfill that assignment and as we fulfill that assignment we must know that we have a weapon that the enemy cannot stand against we have a name that will keep us that is the powerful and the wonderful name of Jesus because of that name we cannot be defeated it's impossible for you to be defeated you may stumble you may trip you may as we say in God over ding dying who bet ding dying it is as if you are falling but the name of Jesus will stabilize you and by the time they know what is up you'll be strong on your two feet I prophesied to somebody this morning may the name of Jesus accompany you may the name of Jesus stabilize you may the name of Jesus hold you and may the name of Jesus comfort you and may it be that everyone within the reach of my voice will say that when I call on the king of kings and the Lord of lords he rushed to my help he lifted me from a bad place he put me on the rock he changed my song from a dirge to a song of praise and so today I will lift up my hands and declare the praises of my God and King and the glories of his name I will declare that my God lives and he is at work in my life and in the life of my family i will declare that indeed there is no god like our god and there's no rock like unto him when he declares a word the word will come to pass he is faithful and true he has kept his covenant from the days of abraham from the days of isaac from the days of jacob he has carried out the covenant into through his son jesus christ and he said that that covenant he will keep to a thousand generations so my friend i want you to understand that you will not fail you will not die before your time the enemy will not overcome you because there's a covenant that is chasing you there's a covenant that is locating you that covenant is sealed in the blood of jesus and that blood is speaking for you somebody say amen. amen this month I'm trying to get on the topic for the mouse we are talking about 
working well together. And I want to speak this morning briefly on the subject strengthening the bonds of our fellowship. Hallelujah. Because we all belong to Jesus, unless you are not a believer, in which case you'll be a believer before we close. There is a certain bond that holds us together. There is a song that says, Blessed be the tie that binds us in Christian love. Hallelujah. So there is a certain, there's a certain bond that is by virtue of the fact that we belong to Jesus. But there is a responsibility on us to strengthen that bond. Hallelujah. Or else we can weaken it. But this morning, I want to share with you on one or two ways in which we can strengthen the bond of fellowship. And that bond of fellowship, when we say talk about fellowship, we are talking about people who are associated with a common interest. Our common interest is Jesus Christ. And he has said that, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. At the gates, people sit down. At the gates, arrangements are made. Deals are struck. Contracts are signed. So when Jesus says that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That means that no matter what the conspiracy of the devil is, no matter what the contract and the arrangement is, that will not prevail against the church. The church will grow stronger and stronger. The more efforts you make to pull down the church, the stronger will the church grow. Somebody say amen. And because of that, he prayed that they may be one. In John 17 verse 11. So that we will realize the importance of having strong bonds of fellowship. Because my friend. At the end of the day. Because of those bonds. We sink or we swim together. Hallelujah. That is why. In some of our local palaces, I don't know about yours, but in the language that I speak, normally, they say that if the I says that I don't care about what happens to the cheek, so go ahead and do what you want to do. The day they slap the cheek, the tears will start coming from the eye. So if you say that you don't care what happens to your brother or your sister, you get to know later. <coughs> Sorry. Sooner rather than later that we are together. Hallelujah. And so it is in your interest to strengthen the bond. That is why the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and verse 25. Maybe if you can give it to me in the message Bible. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 25 It says that Let us consider Let us see how inventive we can be In encouraging love and helping out Verse 25 Not avoiding worshipping together If the Bible is yours or even it's on your phone Underline it it says what? Not avoiding worship. We cannot strengthen our bonds of fellowship if we don't worship together. Hallelujah. You cannot worship in the spirit. You cannot fellowship in the spirit all the time. We must worship together. And for us to worship together, my friends, we must learn to tolerate one another. 
Because some people don't come to church because they cannot tolerate some people when they don't they don't come to church because they cannot tolerate the voice of some people. They cannot tolerate the dressing of some people. They cannot tolerate the perfume of some people. Tulale. They can't tolerate it. So they'll tell you that they are watching online. But in watching online, it's not the same as worshipping together. If we are going to strengthen the bonds of fellowship that bind us, my friends, we must learn to be present. Hallelujah. No matter how strong you are, when you are all the time by yourself, your strength will wane. We are all like pieces of logs making a big bonfire. And if you do not come into the place where other believers are, that means that you are taking your log outside. No matter how strong it was, while it was with the other logs, while it is staying alone, it will go out. So no matter what anybody has done to you, and by all means, somebody will do something to you in church. I can prophesy to you. Somebody will do something to you in church. Somebody will say something that will upset you. Somebody will cross your path. Somebody will step on your nice uh, uh, white dress that you are wearing. Somebody will do that. But the reason why we must still worship together is that we are members one of another. Hallelujah. And so, if we are going to strengthen the ties, my friend, let us make a vow that no matter what anybody has done to me in church, I will be present in church. I will not be absent. I will be present. Tolerate one another. It says, sparing each other on, especially as we see the big day coming. I prophesy that your big day will come. You can take it like the time of uh, that Christ is going to come. But I'm also saying that it will be your day of great grace. Your day of deliverance. As that day is coming, what will trigger it? It's your being in physical fellowship. Hallelujah. Maybe your great day will be somebody telling you, I love you. Can I marry you? We don't do that, you know. You have to come to church. For the person to sit by you. The person will say that, yes, as they are singing the name of Jesus, I am feeling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That one, you cannot, that, that, this atmosphere, you cannot substitute it on the phone. Hallelujah. Look at the way these people were singing. Even if you, even if you're a piece of wood, you will respond. So let us be present. Present, present. Tell yourself that no matter what anybody has done to me. Let's look in the, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Real quick. Tell us that for, you know, we must be gentle with one another. I'm saying that for us to strengthen the ties that bind us, we must tolerate one another. This is a breakdown of tolerating one another. Be gentle with one another. Be sensitive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be sensitive. When the person is coming to church, you realize that the person's face is not a happy face. It's not the time for you to start cracking jokes. Maybe he hasn't eaten. And so, but when they don't eat, their, their anger reaches high level. They are oversensitive. So as you see him, just say, the Lord is with you. Don't get too close. You have to be sensitive. Hallelujah. Otherwise, the words that will come out of his mouth. If you don't take care, you ask that you go into the ground. And another way for us to tolerate one another is to forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave us. Your forgiveness must be quick. And it must be thorough. You don't re re replay it. There 
are people who are not coming to church now because they could not tolerate somebody. But my friends, let's tolerate one another because we are different people. Hallelujah. Coming from different places. Hallelujah. So I am appealing to you according to the word of God. Let us tolerate one another. Let us agree that we are not coming from the same place. And if there's anybody that you know in church who has stopped coming to church because he couldn't tolerate somebody, please go out to that person and tell the person that we are members one of another. Hallelujah. It's a good place to clap. That is why we are in church. That is why we are in church. Let's learn to tolerate one another. When we look in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it also tells us one other way. Let's look at the King James Version. One other way in which we can strengthen the ties that bind us. In um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, You also as lively stones. Let's be lively. Hallelujah. Don't come to church with your face forlorn. Be a lively person. Let's be creative. Let's be innovative. Let's be inventive. Yesterday, the students organized a walk. After the walk, they ate wache and kinky. Some took some home. Maybe some people are in church here because of the wache or the kinky. But somebody had to be creative. When we are coming to church, be lively. Even if there's no food in your stomach, be lively. When you haven't eaten, nobody writes on your face that you haven't eaten. In the same way that when you don't have money in your pocket, it's not written on your forehead that you don't have money in your pocket. In fact, the time that you don't have money, you must be the happiest at that time. Because he that is down, this year no fall. Where you are, you can't get worse than that. So better be happy and thank God because you can't get worse than that. Hallelujah. You can't get worse than that. You can't get worse than that. Hallelujah. So be happy, it says that ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood then he says to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to god and i believe that one of those sacrifices is what the hymn squad sang go out and preach the gospel spend and be spent in the master's work Jesus sent the disciples, Luke chapter 10 verse 1, that they should go out two by two. Let us do something creative. Let us make church a place that people will look forward to coming. It's not for anything because of you. Hallelujah. 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 You can look for something to look forward to in church. Every Sunday you are coming, think of something that is lively. Something that will make somebody smile. It may just be a pen that you go and give to somebody. Or a pencil. Or an eraser. Or a tom tom a sweet. No matter how angry the person is, the moment you give her the tom, the tom tom sweet, her face will light up like the sun. And how much is Tom Tom? So I think 15, 10 pesos or something like that. But it makes the church lively. Let's make church lively. Hallelujah. Somebody say yes. Make church lively. Like church is not about the dress you are wearing. Church is about the person that you are relating to. Hallelujah. So don't look at the dress that you are wearing and let it be an ambition on you. Quiet ashes. When people are coming, smile to them. Even if you are standing in the sun. Because the Bible says the sun shall not smite you by day. Don't say that somebody has punished you. Let's learn to tolerate. And then let's learn to be lively stones. Lively stones. And then one more thing that I want to say. Is that if we are going to strengthen the ties that bind us. We must keep away from things that put us apart. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. 
He says that there are certain things you must put away. So I'm saying that, look, my friends, look, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me reverse a little bit. Let us think about things that will make people look forward to coming to church. Hallelujah. Nice programs. Fellowship. And you decide that, look, today, all singles... We are going to have an outing. Hallelujah. And there's nothing to be shy about if you are single. You don't have a second opportunity to be single. So when you are single, make the best of it. Hallelujah. Happy yourself when you are single. Happy yourself. When it's Valentine's Day and nobody has invited you, Invite yourself, go to a papa here or a restaurant. Put red rose on your own shirt. As for your meal, when you finish eating, stand up and walk majestically to your home. Hallelujah. And stop thinking about things that are not there. Take what is there. And then God will give you what is not there. Somebody give the Lord some praise this morning. Yes. So when they say singles are meeting, don't hide. If you hide, how can you be seen? I am praying that between now and the end of the year, somehow, by a lively operation of the Holy Spirit, may some singles be found. Be found. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Be proud. Wherever you are, be happy about it. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Happy about it. Because you are not going to be there all the time. It will change. Hallelujah. It will change. It will change. I said it will change. It will change. Only God remains the same. Everything will change. Hallelujah. 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 Because of that, there are certain things you must avoid. Because they spoil the bond. And first Peter chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 tells us about some of those things. We'll do it real quick. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, laying aside, you can go even to the to the to the to the message Bible, but this one is not bad. Lay, they said malice is evil intention or action that you have an intention to do somebody harm. Hallelujah. So in your mind, you are thinking bad. He says, put it aside. Hallelujah. Eh? This, you know, I do you, you do me thing. We must stop it in church. Hallelujah. Vengeance is mine. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. So put away malice. He says, clean, make so clean house. Make a clean sweep of malice and pretense. If the ties are going to be strengthened, let's stop pretending. Hallelujah. Let's stop it. Let's be real like I keep saying. And let's love people sincerely. When you see our students worshipping with us, be nice to them. Hallelujah. Stop pretending. Hallelujah. They are not coming to take anybody. They are also playing their part. Hallelujah. What is yours is yours. Nobody can come if you don't get the boy, that means it wasn't he was not yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was not yours. You also you, you serve God. When you are going for evangelism, go to evangelism. Do everything. Your boy will come. Your girl will come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Corey says, Are you listening to me? Yeah. Stop fighting with each other. There's enough space for everybody. 
There's only one person you can marry. It's just one person, not two people. And the person doesn't have to be in the choir. The person could be in the prayer warriors. So once in a while, when there's a prayer warriors meeting, go for the prayer warriors meeting. They say that you are just passing by and you saw them having pray. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Put away malice. Stop thinking bad. Stop thinking that this relationship, I wish it doesn't end well. It's malice. Because you haven't got yours. Yours is also coming. If somebody also says that, will it be good for you? Let's think good about each other. Hallelujah. And then he says, envy. I'm yeah. Is it down here? Envy. Stop envying people. Envy, it breaks the bones. Envy breaks the bones. Envy. I envy somebody. Envy can give you high blood pressure. It can give you stroke. Put away envy. Don't envy anybody. Hallelujah. The coat that he's wearing, the skirt suit that she's wearing, I keep on telling you, for all you know, she borrowed it. So are you envying a borrowed skirt suit? Your own is even better than hers. Don't envy. Hallelujah. Envy destroys the bones. Because of that envy, you don't say hello to her. Or when she says hello to you, then you turn your face the other way. Or when she's passing here, you pass here. Or when he's going this way, you come this way. Envy must stop. Both brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. It breaks the bones. But we want to strengthen the bones. And then it says, hateful talk. Things that you say to hurt people. You know this thing you are telling the person, it will hurt her. It will hurt him. You know it. Hallelujah. But you say it and say, I don't care. I've told him my peace of mind. When you do that, you break the bones. But we want to strengthen the bones. Somebody say amen. We want to strengthen the bones. Strengthen the bones. And let me tell you one more thing. That if we are going to strengthen the bones, we must be vigilant. Vigilant. Watching over each other. Because when we refuse to grow, the devil will come in. And cause commotion. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Down to about verse 30. The person sows good seed. But while men are sleeping, because they are not vigilant, the enemy so stares. So when we refuse to grow and strengthen the bonds amongst us, we give an opportunity for the devil to send messengers in our midst. Sometimes the devil sends messengers into the church. But we must be vigilant so that this person is an evil person. He comes, he says, I want to marry you. I want to marry you. When I see you, I am shaking. I want to marry you. He's an evil person. He says that before I marry you, I want to sleep with you. He's an evil person. But it's because some brother is not being vigilant. At the time he should propose to you, he's not proposing to you. He's doing, I look here, I look in London. I look here, I look in London. I look here, I look in London. Be bold, brothers. Between now and December, propose. This is not for the students. Students, work for God. Pray, fast, study the Bible. Is that okay? Students, wave, wave to me and let me see. Let me see, the students. Why, are you afraid to wave, wave. You are the ones I'm talking to. 
when a student you are in level 300 and somebody says he's going to marry you tell me get the bar behind me satan and the person is in the same level 200 as you so he himself he does not see his way clear so what is he going to marry you with hallelujah what is he going to and so the things that you are doing the two of you the things that you are doing where is it going to end if where it's going to end is no good stop it hallelujah hallelujah he's telling you i love you me too i love you i love you me too i love you i love you where is it going i love your hairstyle me too i love your trouser i love your spectacles me too i love your eyes instead of going to evangelize i love you you love me you, love me. I love you. Do you know what love is somebody say amen. amen so let us be vigilant vigilant the bible tells us in james chapter 4 verse 7 it says resist the devil let's watch over each other hallelujah when you see somebody is going in the wrong direction bring the person back in love hallelujah don't wait for the person to fall into a pit you know this man came to you he told you lies and he's now come to your sister and he's telling her the same lies and you are waiting for her to suffer the way you suffered please let's be vigilant pastors let's be vigilant deacons elders let's be vigilant these are the people god has given us and i always say that the church is like a sophisticated hospital that has got different departments the outpatients department that some of you that when we just say praise the lord everything is okay some of you need surgery so we have to take our time and skill to take care of you some of you you are you have to be put in intensive care units because the thing that is happening to you you need intensive care and we the people in the church must be available in the hospital we have doctors and nurses in every department so when somebody needs intensive care have time for that person hallelujah when somebody needs surgery have time for that person if it is outpatients department also you don't, don't spend outpatients department time you know intensive care you need time on outpatients he was on here let him hear the sister that you are spending all the time with, she's okay The person that needs help is her friend. But you are spending eighty percent of your time with her because she's thought she's, she's she's tall and slim. Yeah, the other person is fat, like Obolo. But it's the same God who made the Obolo and the slim. So I am making a special appeal to all of us: let's make time for each other. In Romans chapter 12 verse 15 it says that those that sorrow sorrow with them those that rejoice rejoice with them because the world is such that at the same moment that somebody is being born somebody is also dying so in the church we have all kinds of people so be there for somebody at the same time that somebody is having outdoor ceremony another person they have lost a loved one but let's be there for each other and i want to wrap this all up by referring you to first samuel chapter 22 in first samuel chapter 22 he's talking about david verse 1 and verse 2 if you forget everything about today's sermon remember the cave of adullam hallelujah the bible says that David he departed he escaped to the cave Adullam 
that cave, that place is like a refuge. Somewhere in the wilderness. It was a place that David went to. It was like a retreat. But there's something that happened at the cave, which I want to suggest to all of us. It says, when his brethren and his fathers heard it, first his brethren and all his father's house, they went down to him. Hallelujah. I want to recommend to you, when you are coming to church, come with the members of your family. Hallelujah. He said David went to the king of Adullam. His fathers, his brothers, they came to him. And then, not only them, he said, the Bible says, and everyone that was in distress. There are people in distress. Hallelujah. And everyone who was in debt, who the car? A lot of us, who the car? The worst thing about somebody who owes you in church is when the person sees you, does not acknowledge that he owes you. And then he behaves as if everything is okay. Everything is not okay. At least tell the person that, oh, I am trying hard to pay my debt. And let the person's crack feel that he's also a human being. Hallelujah. And then you worsen it by after church while the person is drinking water. One CD, Voltec, is drinking and taking strength from it. You go to the food court. You order, you start. Status, spring roll. You add a drink. Then you move to watch it. You wrap it up with popcorn. And you owe somebody. May God have mercy. For those of you who are old, have mercy on us. Hallelujah. We do not know what we do. Have mercy on us. And then it says, and everyone who was also discontented. These are the people who should come to church also. So beloved, when you come to church and somebody says, I owe, church is the place we'll come to. When somebody says, I am not happy. It is even my own fault. This is the place they should come to. And he says that, and they gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. Can we have people in church who are like David? And when people come to you and they are in need, you don't throw them back. But you've helped them to get out of their situation. May the church be like the cave of Adullam. That people who are discontented, people who are dead, in debt, people who are discouraged, when they come here, they will find strength. They will find hope. They will, they will, their heads will be lifted up again. By so doing, and these people, they were all children of Israel. Hallelujah. So people, you can be a Christian, but you can be in debt. When you come to church, my beloved and Lord, let's be available for them. And let me say this in one moment. Let us leverage on our strengths. Hallelujah. I want to make an announcement. Tomorrow, when we are having, uh, we will have a lunch hour from 12 to 1. I want all those who are unemployed, you don't have a job, come for lunch hour from 12 to 1. After 1 o'clock, we'll have a meeting with you. I believe that there are answers in the church. Hallelujah. When you come to church, we must take care of you. So, you come. Make your way. 12 to 1, we'll pray. After that, we'll meet with you. And I believe that before the end of this year, 
God will change your situation. Because there are men here who want to marry, but they don't have jobs. But they can get jobs. And there are women here who don't have faith. I'm really closing now. That although you don't have a job today, tomorrow you can get a job. So when you're working with a man and he doesn't have a job, don't think that's the end of his life. Tomorrow he can get a job. Hallelujah. Don't wait for him to get a job before you say, and now I'm a kind of Debbie. And then my sister Marjorie. What can I? That's why some of the men leave the church. They go and take people from outside. Because we are too sophisticated. Hallelujah. But may we build the bonds of fellowship and love amongst us. Today I want to pray for some people. I want you to stand up to your feet. Because I believe that when we come into the house of God, God intervenes in our situations. Close your eyes if you can, please. And as you close your eyes, I want to speak to somebody who came into this service who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He is not the Lord and the Savior of your life. So you are not even part of this fellowship we are talking about. But you want to be a part of that fellowship. Somebody invited you to church or you came on your own. You've been coming into this service. But today you want to make a quality decision for Jesus. And say that today I surrender all to you. If you are the one I'm speaking to, lift up your right hand. Wherever you are standing, just lift up that right hand. You want to say that, God, I put everything else aside. I want to come to you just as I am. I'm not waiting to become perfect before I come to you. I'm coming to you in my imperfection. I want you to make something new out of my life. If you are the one that I'm speaking to here, the Holy Spirit is speaking to. Just lift up your right hand while every eye is closed and every head is bowed down and lift it high up to the Lord because Jesus is making something new out of your life. You want to come to him just the way you are. You want to become a part of the fellowship of believers. You want to be sure that if Jesus will come tonight and he's calling the names, your name will also be part of it. If you are not sure of this, just keep your right hand lifted up. I want to pray for you. 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 Jesus is speaking to you. He wants to make something new out of your life. The Bible says, speaking of Jesus, that he said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You need that rest. You've been fighting. You've been struggling. There's a lot of misunderstanding. You need rest. Slip up your right hand. And I'm going to pray for you. And the God of rest will give you rest. If you've lifted up your right hand, I want to pray for you. Just make your way to the front. There are any ushers close to those who have lifted up their hand. You can just bring them right to the front here. Ushers, anybody who has lifted up your hand, you can just help the person. If you come with your purse, come with your bag, come with your Bible, whatever you came into this service with, right off the back there. Maybe you didn't lift up your hand, but you know that you need to come into this fellowship. You need Jesus. You need him. There's too much confusion in your life. You can't handle that habit. It's tearing you apart. You are afraid of tomorrow. Why don't you join these ones right now? Come confidently from the seat where you are. Join these ones. God will make something new out of your life. I feel like I'm waiting for somebody to join these ones this morning. God has not assured us of tomorrow. But today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. If you are the one that I'm speaking to, just come and join these ones right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You may be a good church goer. 
you may even have been baptized and confirmed but Jesus is not the Lord of your life come and join these ones and let me pray with them this is why God allowed you to come into the service today let's pray with these ones together say Lord Jesus today I come to you just as I am Jesus come into my heart make me your child from today I am all yours father I thank you for these ones I declare by the name of Jesus Christ that they are secured in the blood of Jesus and I ask oh Lord that they will stand for you and serve you all the days of their life in the name of Jesus Christ amen Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.